what, what the mate is talking about. Black women and black gay males, they, they're writing hit pieces and they're speaking very, very reckless of black men. Yeah. Like, you know, black men are on their radar, like we're in their crosshairs. Yeah. And everything is like, okay, like white supremacy, we thought, and, and here's the thing, like, they, a lot of them write for these, they write, they write these columns and where they respond kind of like they're for justice and equality and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when they write a hit piece on a black male, it kind of goes under the radar that they're, that it's, that it's been, a, it's, it's a, uh, what they call it, a, uh, it's a coup basically. Yeah. You yeah. know, like they, they like. It's they, Jedi mind tricks. Yeah, they're playing those tricks, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think about these type of people and how do we eradicate them? Yeah. I ain't talking about just deal with them. Yeah. I'm talking about how do we eradicate them? Well, you know, that's what I was talking about last night when I was talking about Black Lives Matter. Like mm -hmm. here we, everybody's, you know, Black Lives Matter is the new movement, but then when you go to the website and there's anti-black man sentiment on it, mm -hmm. how can you claim to be representing black people, but you have an issue with our men? Your, your, your agenda says loud and clear, we want to take the movement away from black men being the head and take it back to where everybody's represented equally. But hold on, so racism, white supremacy is not the number one agenda? Right. So you going after the black man first. Right. Then we could talk about racism. Oh, okay. Right. But shame on us for not going and doing the knowledge and at least looking at the website to see what what the what the real agenda was really about. Um, you know, this is the white man's world. He's built the hell of a world for himself. So the money, the fame, the accolades, uh, the you know, being on CNN, being on MSNBC, being able to be accepted and embraced by them is really what these people want. They want to be accepted. They don't, they don't. The things I talk about are controversial. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I if I was to go down that path, my my career would blow up overnight. So when you do that, when you are speaking a language that is comforting to white people and that makes them feel good, you get rewarded for it. So they're being rewarded for it. And then also, a gay black man is never going to be able to stand up for and speak for black men. He's on the border line of whether he's a woman or a man. And so when we talk about the LGBTQ element of this, we have to understand that there is a dynamic that's happening down now that's breaking down the fabric of the male-female relationship. Is a gay black man going to be able to stand up and respect and protect me as a woman? Is a gay woman going to be able to take that matriarchal position where she is knows that she has a responsibility to men whether she's involved with one or not or is she thinking from the perspective of trying to be a man so in the media now we have and it's, it's you know they we've been saying for a long time not time now we think the white man's ice is colder we have social media now you can start your own blogs you can build your own website and speak up for your people in a way that doesn't compromise your integrity but we want that fast train to success. And there is an inner war going on between black men and black women. Not all of us, but social media is magnifying it now to where these people have a voice to go on and all they pain from what, what their father did to them or their boyfriend or their baby daddy or their baby mama or whatever, all of that pain now is being covertly hidden in thought pieces about black people and where we stand right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to me because I always say the exact, exact same thing that you're saying is that how can we have, how can I as a black man have a black daughter that I so-called love and I hate black women? Yeah, yeah. So how can you as a black woman have a black son and hate black men? What can you possibly give your son if you hate that which he is to become. Absolutely. How, how can you hate that? Yeah. And they somehow, in their little bitty pissy minds, think that it's possible to do that. 
I can love my yeah. son but hate all black men. You can love your else. son and fuck your son up too. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? You can love your son and have him in environments that are that are uh, that are going to mess him up. You can love your son and let him walk around the house in your high heel shoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's there's different levels of 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 communication. So me and you right now are having this conversation. Then there's the body language communication. Then there's the energy frequency communication. So when you are a, a, a mother and you're around your child, and I know this from from my interaction with my son, because I'm a lot of times I'm just studying and I'm not physically present. I'm, I mean I'm physically present, but I'm not mentally present. I'm in a zone. My son knows now how to speak this language with me. He knows how to move around me when I'm in that zone. As right, a right. woman, even if you know what I'm saying, even if, yeah, yeah, yeah. even if you're not shout out to Nassim, even if you're not speaking to your child, you're still speaking to your child. So you got this whole anti male sentiment in you, and you think because you're cooking dinner and because you're giving your child a bath that they're not feeling it. No, they feel it. Mm. Wow, very impressive. So how do we get back on the same? How do we get back to? black acceptance uh gender acceptance you know like because that not that's not just a lot of hate out there with the feminist women there's a lot of black men who hate black women oh yeah there's a lot of them out there and it's like you say you'll get rewarded if, if you take out their agenda you follow their agenda because they hate us too yeah so if you my this is the way i operate the way i operate is that whatever my enemy love, I hate. Mm -hmm. Whatever they hate, I love. Mm -hmm. So if I see them attacking somebody and saying that's the bad guy, automatically I'm interested in that person because I'm thinking that's the good guy because I know what the enemy in this country is capable of yeah. and I know how they operate. Like everybody who they have ever went and killed was their friend. Yeah. They kill their friends. Oh, absolutely. All the time. They kill their own so, people. Exactly. So I know what they'll do to me. Mm -hmm. So when I see them operating, you know, for me, the first thing to do is to trust the person that's on the other side and give that person the benefit of the doubt. Just like they come up with this, what do they call it, black identity, what is it? Extremist. Black identity extremist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now if I identify with blackness to the extreme i'm a target by my own government yeah well i'm already a target just being a black man black right. person but now they identify me as an extremist so now they're trying to have an excuse so they can kill me so they can take me out mm -hmm. because this is the same play that they that they uh, ran back in 57 mm -hmm. when they come up with this whole idea of COINTELPRO and mm -hmm. all this so I'm more apt to not believe what they're doing. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we circumvent these attacks that they have on us and get back to each other? Well, the first thing I'm gonna say is goes back to food and eating. Um, professor Tyrone Hayes, who was a professor, a biologist at uh, UC Berkeley, did extensive research and found that they were the uh, company named Atrazine hired him. They have a pesticide called Sergenta that they spray on all of the corn that is being produced in this country. And he did a study on frogs and found that the frogs were being turned, the male frogs were being turned into females, that they were developing female ovaries, that they were uh, starting to have homosexual behavior with other male frogs. So I'm only saying this because this takes us back to diet and what we eat. We don't know what we're putting in our mouths and it's affecting us not just you gaining weight or you losing weight, but it's affecting your cellular DNA. It's affecting your uh, uh, anatomy. It's affecting men having breasts. It's affecting men starting to become uh, uh, feminized or, or having women-like qualities. So that's the science element of it. Um, I think it's important for me to be the best, most righteous, uh, most uh, intelligent uh, woman that I can be. I'm setting a standard when I walk in a room. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I speak, I'm setting a standard. So when I'm interacting, when people watch me on camera or when young people are sitting in the audience, 
it's going to affect them a certain type of way. When you walk into a room, when you interact with young boys, when you interact with other men, it's setting a standard for what manhood should look like. So it's important for us, all of us as individuals and as a community to embody black excellence. What the mate is talking about. Yeah. Order, Texas.